with 1080p monitors being so common and cheap, could a little extra money get you a much better product? This is the Lenovo L24Q20 IPS LED monitor. By the way, who names monitors? Because this monitor's name is terrible. I'll forgive this monitor because it's 2560 by 1440 and is only 200 bucks. It's the cheapest price for a monitor with this resolution. But is it worth it? Right out of the box, you have manuals, which no one really reads, so you should throw those in the trash can. Other than that, the box also sports the base for the stand of the monitor, the monitor, an HDMI cable, and an AC adapter. Assembly was straightforward. You take the base, you take the stand, you put them together, you screw them together, you put it onto the monitor, done. Perfect. The back of the monitor contains a power input, headphone jack, HDMI and display port. Along the stand is a plastic hook that's there to help you cable manage and return you get an ugly clear thing sticking out at all times. The matte screen looks fantastic however I don't really have anything to compare it to since all the monitors in my house are all glossy displays. But comparing the sharpness that Quad HD brings in comparison to a 1080p monitor it's no contest. Quad HD wins. The bezels are thin to the point that they wouldn't really annoy you but they're not as thin as Dell's ultra sharp line of monitors because those, they're ultra sharp. I think to get the monitor this cheap, they had to make a few sacrifices. The first thing you'll notice, especially if you have a habit of shaking your leg like me, is that the stand is not all that sturdy. The display wobbles a lot, even with a little bit of movement, unlike some of its similarly priced 1080p counterparts. This really would be a non-issue if it had a VESA mount, which by the way, this monitor doesn't. So even when your girlfriend, a boyfriend, a dog, parents start yelling at you to get off the computer and go do something else, well, it'll probably wobble. A couple of features are grayed out in the monitor's menus. I'm thinking because they probably use a default software package for all their monitors. But my question is, why didn't they just leave out the things that they didn't need? It just makes it look like it's incomplete. Like the software is crap. The entire backside of this monitor is encased in hard plastic, which creaks and croaks every time you put some pressure onto it. While the build quality isn't fantastic, it's a good looking monitor with my only real complaint being the fact that the buttons stick out instead of being flush with the entire thing. It just, <clears throat> just annoys me. So would I recommend this monitor? At $200 for a 1440p 60Hz monitor, it's a great deal. For those that are looking for a monitor that don't already own a monitor, this could be a really good option. If you need higher resolutions for your photo or video editing or your gaming, well, this is a very good budget option. Well, let's say you own a 1080p monitor already. Well, then upgrading just doesn't seem as logical. Yeah, everything's more clear and crisp on a 1440p monitor. A 1080p monitor meets most people's needs. Unless, of course, like I said before, you're doing Fodio. Fodio? You don't really need all that extra crispiness unless you're really doing photo, video, or gaming. 4K monitors are what you should be waiting to get cheaper, because once those get cheap, you know, 4K. Is this monitor a good value for its price? Yes. Should everyone buy it? No. You make your own choices on what you think. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment, and well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.